Now we just need to do our final tracks at the end of this clip. So we can um, go back to this SUV and just recreate our X spline for that. Uh, turn off the track for this silo so we don't forget later. Uh, call this SUV2. And then just create one more for the trees. Got trees. And then we will just start tracking these backward. First we want to kind of set where it goes out of frame. That should do right there. Set the end point. And for this SUV, set the endpoint about there. Sometimes I get confused and set the set the in and out points uh, on here, which controls the entire clip. And so we just want to set it right here. All right. Now that we have that, and I can. Uh, this looks a little too angular, so I can just uh, adjust these handles all at once by right-clicking. Okay, and track this backward. Alright, so it's uh, done tracking. And all we need to do now is to select all of these tracks make sure that you have them selected go to our camera solve module we will set our camera to small parallax change because we have some parallax in the shot but it's not too obvious And then our focal length should be in the 35 to 70 millimeter range, something like that. Uh, 
Okay. So that's all we need to do. And then just click solve. The camera solve has finished. So uh, the first thing that we notice is that we have a solve quality, which is 96%. And 96% is really good because it is uh, almost 100%. And I know from uh, information from uh, Imagineer, the makers of no Mocha, that 70% is considered to be a good solve. So, uh, all we have left to do now is to export our camera data. And we have three different options here. Uh, we have our After Effects 3D motion data. Uh, we can also export uh, an FBX file uh, for applications other than After Effects such as Maya or Nuke. So uh, we'll just copy this to clipboard. And then we can go uh, right into After Effects and start uh, using that uh, 3D data in our scene.